We bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of the servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. We we'll bring praise to you, our God and King. When you step into any dry situation, abundance will show up. When you embark on any journey, you don't carry provisions like humans like us. Your plan has never failed because you yourself, you are the provision. By faith, Abraham spoke when Isaac asked him, Father, here's a firewood. Where is the lamb for the sacrifice? And Abraham said, the Lord will provide. You are the great provider. You can supply our needs according to the riches of heavenly supply. You don't run this world from the economy of man. You are an unlimited God. Therefore, we pray that help us to partake in this, your divine nature. May this, your divine nature, overflow into the bodies and the lives of mortal men. Let your word come out with power. Change lives for good. In Jesus' name we pray. Shout hallelujah. Can you turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, the great, the great supplier will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Say amen. amen. Let's open our Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings 4. The topic of today is the great supplier, the great supplier. Second Kings 4, 1. Now there cried the certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And a creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born men. And Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid had not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go. Borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Are you following? Okay, what is the next word there? Borrow not what? Borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shall pour out into all those vessels. And thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon him, upon her and her, and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more, and the oil stayed. Praise the Lord. Let me just add the complete story, the remaining part. Verse 7. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and leave thou and thy children on the rest. May the Lord Give us understanding to his word this morning. 
so that by the time we'll be living here, we will live here as people who are blessed indeed in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at your neighbor, ask your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. if God releases supply this morning, do you have vessels to take them home? God steps into the situations of men. And whenever God steps in, it is when man has failed. That is when God steps in. And whenever God steps in, it is called miracle. A miracle is the intervention of the divine in the affairs of humanity. That is a miracle, something that is unusual, something that is not natural. God is a great supplier. We have a word of confession that all things come from you and of your own. Thank you. And of your own do we give you. There is nothing that is in existence today that never came from God. I try to look at man in general. Sometimes when I sit, I'm quiet. I look at life in general. Life, the summary of life is that life is difficult. Life is not easy. We meet different situations. There are different phases and different stages in life. Some of these stages are stages that you need no other person than God alone. And every human being in this world, there is always a moment you need just God alone, and you don't need any man. In the situation of this woman who had worked with God, with the husband, for years, the man was a prophet, and the woman made a statement that actually gladdens my heart. She met the man of God and said, man of God, you know my husband who is now dead, that he was a prophet and that he feared the Lord upon the poverty he did not give up and do you know what upon the fear of God upon the heart of this man he died a debtor and he was still faithful to God praise the Lord there may be two causes two major causes number one it may be that the man though he was a prophet he was satisfied in his debts and never made any attempt to struggle in life to come out of them. It may be as a result of his own shortcomings. Secondly, it could be that it was his own, his own kind of trial in life, the way Job met with situations that were beyond his control. And the wife said, Job, curse God and do what? And die. The man refused to give up. But whichever situation that was the truth, the man stood to the end and died as a prophet. He did not behave like Gehazi, who took the goods from Naaman and took the leprosy that was behind the goods. He was faithful to the end. The woman also understood very well that her problems were more than what her family members could settle. As a matter of fact, the creditor came, came and wanted to took the sons, two sons. In those days, slaves, slavery was legal. They still sell humans in those days. None of the family members could come out to say, no, our brother's children must not be sold into slavery. No, the whole family failed. Nobody could protect the rights of this woman and her children. But the woman knew that there is a God in Israel. The one that the husband served faithfully before he died. Though he served God and died poor, the woman still believed that the God who allowed the husband to die like that could still do something. A lot of times when we try to pick our calculator and calculate God with our calculators, 
that uh, so something happened, the person died. So something killed so so person in my family. Can God still do this one? Nathaniel was invited to go and meet Jesus. Nathaniel, when he was told that Jesus Christ is a prophet from Nazareth, Nathaniel looked at the whole of the place and he said, Can any good thing come out of what? Calculated the whole place, summed it up. I said, we have been all these years. No prophet has risen from here. But God is a great supplier. He can do the unusual. How many of us knows the name of the father of Mary in the Bible? Mary, the mother of Jesus. Who knows the name of the father or mother? Eh? How many people, eh? The way we hear the name of Joseph, the way we hear the name of David, the way we hear the name of Solomon, and we know their history very well. How many of us know the names of this man and the woman? That shows that the people were not very prominent. Even when the angel appeared to Mary and told Mary, Mary was still shocked. That upon all these people, is it me? A lot of times, when God wants to make some provisions, he comes in a way that people will not even understand. Praise the Lord. This woman did not carry her calculator and begin to calculate God. That this is it, this is it, this is it. No. She knew that for everything that happens... When we, st we are still faithful to God, God has a purpose and it does not change the personality of God. That one is enough for the woman to give up and go into prostitution. That Elisha, your God, has failed. My husband served him. You know, you are a prophet. You know that he feared the Lord, but he died in poverty. What kind of God are you serving? The God of poverty? It was enough reason for the woman to give up on the God of Elisha. But the woman still summoned another level of faith. Being a widow, faced with this kind of threat, the husband was about losing his name in life. So the woman went there and said, Man of God, I know that God has a purpose for everything that happens to my husband. And today he's no more. Yet, though my husband was faithful, now I have come, I have come with a problem. You have access to God. I need solution. How many of us are here? How many of us are here? You are just here. You don't need any solution. Is there anybody like that? You don't need any solution. You are just here. Uh, a baby is raising his hand because he's a baby. Add another 10 years, he will have his own needs. When this woman came before the man of God and saw that something good could still come from the ministry that the husband left, it may be that the husband left untimely. Because if you look at the story, it could mean that these children were still young. If the children had been grown up adults, maybe they would, probably they would have been married. Is that true? Eh? If they had been grown ups, they would have been working to make sure they service the debt of the father, of the late dad. So when the woman now saw that everything had failed, even the husband died and was not very old, or probably he gave birth to the children when he was close to old age. But from the information we have, the children, we are still young. She came before the man of God. And the man of God asked this woman two questions. Everybody says, say two questions. 
These are the questions. Number verse 2. Second Kings 4, 2. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? What can I do for you? Second question, what do you have in the house? What do you have? If you try your best, remember Elisha was a big man of God. It was difficult to assess this man like that. And that was why a woman trying to meet with the man of God, the prophet, the servant was stopping her. And the man of God said, no, don't worry, let her come. When the woman had the rare opportunity of meeting with the man of God face to face, and the man of God said, what can I do for you? And added another question. What do you have in the house? Which one do you suppose to answer? Among the two questions. What can I do for you? What do you have? Which one do you suppose to answer? If you have the opportunity of meeting with the president of this country today, and he asks you, what can I do for you? What do you have in the house? Which will you spend time to select the questions? The man of God knew that the woman had a need and the problem had been brought before the man of God. Man of God, my husband died in debt. They want to take our two children. I have come to you for solution. Okay, woman, what can I do for you? Man of God, there is no need to ask. I need money. Give me money and let me go. Look at your Bible. And she said, Thine handmaid had not anything in the house save a pot of oil. I don't have anything. Man of God, if I have something, I wouldn't have come to you. The woman tactfully judged the first question and attended to the second question. What can I do for you? If you give me money today, tomorrow, we are going to eat. What do you have in the house? It means if I can provide something from my house, that thing automatically will become great tomorrow and it will be mine. When a small shy brought two loaves of bread and five fish, after they gathered 12 baskets, who's supposed to receive the 12 baskets? The remainder, 12 baskets, who's supposed to get them? And the woman said, Man of God, I don't have anything. As a matter of fact, I have nothing. But this is what I have. I have just a little oil in my house. As a Christian, if you lack oil, if you lack oil in your life, you are finished. I was talking to a woman of God this morning. And I told her, I said, you can set a man of God up, eh? but it's nothing. You can bring a gun face to face to a man of God and said, I want to take your life. That one is left for God to decide. But if a man of God, if you set him up and scandalize his name, if the spirit of God, the oil of God is still upon his head, you have done nothing. Because it is even then God will prove himself that my servant is innocent. You understand me? So when some people say, you are accusing me that I'm fretting this girl. You are accusing me that I'm sleeping with your wife. Okay, I will just do it. You have failed God. You have failed him. Just stand on your right. It means you are that type of person. And you did not have the opportunity to say, I love you. Now somebody has said it for you, you want to go ahead and do it. 
Don't lack oil in your marriage. Don't lack oil in your business. Even if you lack every other thing, don't lack oil. When David messed up and he was crying to God and he was confessing his sins to God, he said, Lord, do not take your Holy Spirit from what? From me. Don't take it from me. Don't take it. The oil is a symbol of anointing. The oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Even though the woman was living in poverty, she had oil. Little, little. Little oil. Praise the Lord. By the time the woman answered the question, the man of God moved to another level of solution. I said, okay, woman, I have heard you. You go and borrow vessels. Go and borrow vessels. Do not borrow a few. Borrow vessels. Don't borrow how many? Don't borrow a few. When people approach God sometimes, and people say, Lord, we want to see you. We want to see your miracle. There are some miracles that will come, and people will not give up. When the church, the early Christians were praying for the release of Peter, and Peter came up, Rhoda that went to open the door, saw Peter and said, no, this miracle is just too sudden. We are praying. We have not said the grace. Peter has showed up. She locked the door in case Peter and went back and told them, Peter is here. The people said, what is wrong with you? Do you mean that Peter has been released? Don't in any way in this world size your God. We serve a very big God. We serve a very big God. By the time Joseph received his dreams, as a small boy, 17 years old, he had already started facing persecutions in life on account of his dreams. He did not give up. He believed that one day he would make it. Even when the madam of the house said, Joseph, do only one thing for me and I will do everything you need for you. Joseph said, no. The woman undersized God and she borrowed a few. As at when the woman shot, let me tell you something. You know what Elijah said? Let's look at it. Elisha. It's verse 4. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons. Shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons. The, if you must make it in life, there are some persons you must remove out of your life. You can't be the friend of everybody in this world. Because everybody will always fail. But among the failures, there is always a friend that sticks closer than death and life. Shut the door. There are some things God may lay in your heart to do. Don't tell people anyhow. If not, they will abort your dreams and you will be like them. At every point in time, especially New Year resolution, look at your life and look at your friends. Anyone that is not worthy of being your friend, screen them off. If some kind of persons visit you and you don't want the friendship, when you see that they are coming, lock your door and hurry out. If you can't tell them, I don't need you, use a way. God has given us wisdom. You don't tell an Amrabah you are a, an Amrabah, so go. Though there are some you can tell like that. But if wisdom demands that, always leave home. Whenever they are coming, you hear them. 
Greeting people, get up, pick your shirt and lock your door. I'm going out now. Screen some people off. You must always, at every point in time, move with people that has the same vision with you. And the man of God said, only you and your sons be inside. So the woman did exactly that. And when she was pouring, she poured and poured and poured and discovered that. She said, bring another one. And the children said, mommy, they are exhausted. Imagine if she had borrowed many and not a few. She would have made it more than that. God does not limit us in our life. We are the people that limit ourselves. I saw on Facebook yesterday a young man who hanged himself. Yes, don't ask for what. Young man, look at his face, very young. He said, uh, after he read the letter of his girlfriend, that uh, now I have found somebody that can buy me soup and food, drinks. You can now go and look for another girlfriend. And the young man saw that life was over took rope and hanged himself and died. For honorary girlfriend, he put his life in the head and in the heart of that girlfriend. So by the time the girl said, you can go, a girl that can break a relationship because of somebody else that can buy you coke and drink, is that girl the person that you want to use to live life? You should be happy that you have not gone to the altar. And he died. And I said, if the devil knew what killed this man, he will arrange guests in the fire. I said, okay, now sleep with them because you like women. Well, well. In the fire. I want to ask a question. How many of us are restricting God? How many of us are restricting God today? Do you have faith? What do you have in the house? Do we have people here who are 20 years, 25 years, 30 years? You are not a graduate. All you graduated, you have no papers to show for it. The only thing you have to show is the story you tell and the small English you can speak. You have not learned any trade. You have no job. You have nothing to show for tomorrow. Yet when you we buy every money, you polish that your shoe very well and talk in and do no stain. And you feel like a big boy. Today may be smooth, but tomorrow and your old age may be rough. Do you have anything? It's not about shouting the biggest amen. If you shout the amen and the blessings come, if there is no container to contain the blessings home, then the blessings will be on the ground. And other people will come and take them. Praise the Lord. Before we pray, listen. If you don't have anything you are doing, go and look for something. It has been most now. There is one of our mothers in this house. She had been looking for a girl that would stay with her and she will pay the girl. After some time, she could go and learn work or do something. I have been looking for, I have not seen anyone. If this mama had been a boy and she have a need of a girl, she could get 20 that would stay and cohabit with her as a boy. Look at your tomorrow, not today. If you don't have anything in the house, go and look for something in the house. And it is that thing the Lord will bless. May the Lord God bless his words in our hearts in Jesus' name. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com Email us at rosannadavid at ymail.com or info at egoeyeopener.com. God bless you.